Good morning. Here we are. Happy Friday morning. Welcome to the PTI Nice Daily Show. My name is Alan Frendahl. This is Mitch Babcock. We're live here on Facebook and Instagram here on Fitness Athlete Friday. We're up in uh, Anchorage, Alaska. So this is uh, why we're going live at 11 a.m. Uh, we have quite a time change out here and got in quite late. Uh, but happy to have you join us here this morning at a little different time. Anything to say? No, I'm just pumped to be in Alaska. I want to shout out. Uh, all the folks that are coming to our course, this is a big one, and we're excited to see uh, all the folks in the Alaska area uh, uh, getting pumped to move some barbells this weekend. Um, so yeah, looking forward to Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. Uh, so we're here in, in Anchorage this weekend. Uh, if you're in Anchorage, we still have one spot left for this course. We're going to be down the road at Turn Again CrossFit. Um, and you'll find us out and about uh, today and Monday um, trying to explore uh, as much of Alaska as we can. And then Zach is down in Denver this, this weekend as well for Fitness Athlete Live at the Denver Police Academy. And that spot has a couple, uh, that course has a couple spots as well. Um, so if you're in Denver and you're looking to take this course, you can still jump in. And then we have the older adult crew out in Bozeman, Montana this weekend with our fo uh, friends at Excel Physical Therapy. And then uh, Jeff, Zach Morgan, and a couple other folks are in Chicago uh, this weekend for Lumbar Spine Management. And then next week, Persistent Pain Management with Justin Dunaway starts the online. That'll be eight weeks online, and that'll be the last cohort of the year. And then a couple weekends, October 23rd and 24th, we have Professional Bike Fit, also in Colorado and Golden with Jason, and that course has one spot as well. So as we get towards the end of the year, a lot of the courses are almost full, so if you're looking to join us out on the road, make sure you sign up sooner rather than later so you can get your spot. So today's topic, uh, Fitness Athlete Friday, all things fitness athlete, CrossFit, powerlifting, Olympic weightlifting, endurance athletes, the active individual. We're going to talk about perfect, perfect, if you're on the podcast, I'm doing air quotes, perfect movement and load adverse physical therapy. Um, so we get this question a lot of how mechanically poor are you going to allow a movement to look? Um, if you, before you basically pull the plug on a patient, basically, um, how awful are we uh, are going to allow movement quality to look before we decide to scrap the movement altogether and or chase 100% perfect mechanics before we allow that movement to be loaded. So where do we stand on that? Um, what is our aversion to loading people up in physical therapy? And what are the ramifications for that with our patients? Yeah, and this this is in our online course where we look at, we look at deadlifts and um, Shout out to those in our current Essential Foundations course right now, putting in the work there on week five. Uh, but it also comes up in our live course as well. You know, like that that movement had a minor fault to it. Do you think we should have taken all the weight off the bar? Or should we go to still working on body weight only mechanics? Like I'm still picking up on something that's not, that doesn't fit my PT mindset of being perfect and therefore I shouldn't do it for this patient. And I think that's like, that's a conversation that needs to be unpacked at a deeper level. And for me, it's, it's looking at, let's take the deadlift specifically, and then let's look at the low back pain statistics, right? If, if you look at the, at, the, at the size and the severity of the problem of low back pain, you would be less concerned with that individual showing you absolutely perfect deadlift mechanics, and you would be more concerned about strengthening their low back by any means possible. And you would take a little bit of flexibility in their mechanics to do so. Because the data around low back pain, and you guys are, you guys are well you know, versed to this, 25 to 45% of Americans within a given year, 80% of Americans over their lifetime, right? Billions upon billions upon billions of dollars being paid out in direct and indirect costs around low back pain. If we look at insurance payment for just low back pain and neck pain, private insurance is paying out 77 billion a year um, public insurance, $45 billion a year, and out-of-pocket costs $12 billion a year towards low back pain and neck pain. Like, this is a gigantic problem that consumers are spending a lot of money trying to solve. And I can promise you the size of that problem was not created because some PTs let some patients deadlift with slightly less than ideal mechanics. That was not the cause of the size and magnitude and severity of this problem. 
what is contributing to this problem, what is contributing to people failing PT, failing conservative care, going out and getting prescription, getting medication, getting surgery, getting an MRI, what is contributing to this problem and the size and scope of it is the fact that as a profession, we may be too averse to loading, averse to movement and loading our patients up. And because of that, because they didn't show us perfect deadlift mechanics, we pull the deadlift as an option, right? Because they didn't show us, you know, oh, there, there was something I didn't love about that squat mechanic or there's something I didn't love about that deadlift mechanic, I'm just gonna go away from it until we can make it perfect. And what we do is we perpetually leave these patients weak. We leave them with their back not strong enough disease even longer. And the longer we let that go, the longer they stay in pain, the more frustrated they are, the more likely they are to look for alternatives that are not better for them than conservative care. What we need is a profession of PTs who are less scared of less than ideal mechanics, right? Who are okay giving someone a submaximal load and letting them work on their mechanics with that submaximal load and being okay and confident in their coaching skill to get someone to move better. If I give someone a 35 pound kettlebell and I let them work through some less than ideal deadlifts while I'm coaching and coaching and coaching, by the time we're done, we're using a 53 pound kettlebell with way better mechanics. But had I been load averse, I may have started with an 18 pound kettlebell not gotten what I wanted out of it, pulled the kettlebell all together, gave them maybe a PVC pipe, and just left it at that for the day. Instead, we need to lean in and say, hey, these are submaximal loads, and what this patient needs is strengthening, and we'll take it in any form or fashion that it can come, right? And let's start them with an elevated surface. Let's start them with a light kettlebell. Let's lean into our coaching ability a little bit and be confident giving them a little bit more load over time and not being so hung up on this movement isn't perfect, therefore I shouldn't do it doesn't move people forward very fast. And I think of it as a continuum of we're always trying to chase perfect movement, yes, um, with the realization that we'll probably never get there with most folks, especially those folks who come in who are fitness athletes um, who maybe have been moving a long time can usually show us pretty good mechanics, but that's not the majority of our patients, at least not yet, right? The majority of folks who come into the clinic are usually sedentary. Um, Mitch spoke a lot to the back pain statistics. A lot of that is not caused by lifting. It's not caused by any sort of trauma. It's all insidious onset pain because people are living a sedentary lifestyle. And the best thing we can do with those people is get them moving, get them loaded, get their tissue stronger, increase the capacity, and also reduce whatever demand is happening to their body that's causing them to have those symptoms. And so we're always chasing perfect movement, um, but realizing that we're never going to get there. Um, and some folks would then interpret that to say, well, then if we can never achieve perfect movement, then and no mechanics matter, and we can just lift with uh, a flex back, and we're fine with a butt wink under load in the squat and things like that. And as I say here at ICE, it's in the middle, it's end not or. We're always chasing perfect movement. We're trying to get people to move better, uh, but we're recognizing they may never get there, um, and we need to load them up as they're able um, in that continuum, knowing that's going to be the most beneficial thing for them. And then always using our clinical reasoning, right? We're in the clinic standing next to that patient. If it doesn't look ideal, but it's loaded and it's not painful and we follow up with that person, we text them the next morning, they come back in for their next visit in two or three days and they say, no, I didn't have any increase in my pain, I had no pain at all, maybe I wasn't even really sore, then we know we were not loading them in a, a malicious way, right? They responded well to that loading, even the mechanics weren't perfect. Um, they're now stronger for having done that and that tissue is now more resilient and arguably more resilient to future faulty movement than it was if we had not loaded at all. Um, you can watch, uh, especially older adults in the gym who, who are maybe a little bit stiffer, um, that spine doesn't really move at all one way or the other, um, and that person can still get really strong and increase their tissue capacity, even if you look at it and you say, mm, that's, that's not exactly what I'm looking for, uh, but you can still build that tissue capacity over time, which just, again, buff against future faulty movement, which is arguably how most of us move outside the gym, right? I'm not thinking about a tight core brace and a deep hip hinge when I bend over and pick up my shoes from the ground, right? I'm lifting it with a rounded back, stuff that's sub-threshold is probably not being performed with good mechanics, and that's okay because that's why we go to the gym, to, to increase that fitness buffer so that we have that resistance um, to faulty movement potentially injuring us down the road. Yeah, the, the things that they're going to encounter in life are not going to be perfect setup deadlifts with a 
you know, absolutely flat, perfect neutral lumbar spine, they're going to encounter some less than ideal positions in life. And you know what else is interesting? 23% of Americans, that's the number. That's the number of folks that are actually meeting physical activity guidelines. And, and that's probably inflated if we're being honest. And yet somehow, you know, probably in part by the law of averages a little bit, we all see think that we're all treating that 23%, right? Oh, no, I see very active people in my clinic. Yeah, 23%, that's the number of, of Americans that are actually meeting physical activity, strength and conditioning guidelines, um, you know, in the U.S. with per CDC recommendations. People are not moving enough. They're, they are not they are not strength training enough. I can promise you that. If they, if they tell you that they're lifting weights and you unpack that a bit further, they're really not engaged in a strength and conditioning program that's going to help uh, make them more resilient make them more uh, injury reverse and that's why we need to lean into that and why it needs to be such a crucial part of our program ideal or not we're going to take the absolute best they can we're going to always continue coaching and refining that movement uh, but we're not going to shy away from load uh, you know if you've taken a course from us it's our love language and we're going to lean into that and every patient's going to get a little bit of that from us and i think um something we discuss in our courses and kind of following where the research is at if you're not in implementing strength and conditioning principles with patients in your practice, you are behind the evidence now. We, we talk about a couple papers that have come out last year and this year that are now comparing traditional physical therapy treatment, whatever that may be, to just sending people to the gym three times a week for general strength and conditioning. And I don't want to spoil it, but the folks who just go to the gym um, have a similar reduction in pain with all the other benefits that come from strength and conditioning. They're faster, they're stronger, they are less fearful of movement, they have lower kinesophobia, they have more positive beliefs about their body, about how strong they are, and they have a much higher compliance um, and adherence to the general strength and conditioning program than the folks who go to the physical therapy appointments. And so we have randomized control trials now, we have systematic review level evidence that says you need to be implementing the stuff in practice. And my mindset always goes from a systems perspective to what does this look like down the future? This looks like instead of the insurance authorization asking for tub time in a couple years, they might say, well, we're not going to pay these visits because we didn't see you assess a five rep max trap bar deadlift. Like that's the standard for treating a low back. Um, and so we're not going to reimburse you for those visits. You saw that person for free. Too bad, so sad. And so if we're trying to be evidence informed and evidence based, the evidence says you need to be having people lift heavy and get their heart rate up uh, as, as part of treating any region of pain in the body. And so that's something else to consider if you're wondering, uh, is this the path I need to go down with my patients? The answer is overwhelmingly yes. And the good news for the folks up here in Alaska is they're going to get a lot of that. They're going to get both barrels of that all weekend. Um, so that's why we're excited. Yeah, it's going to be a great weekend. You want to tell them what course they're going to do? I already did. You already did. I already did that. Yeah. Totally. So if you'll be here uh, in Anchorage this weekend, we're looking forward to joining you. we got a big crew at Turnigan CrossFit starting tomorrow morning, so we're happy to see you. If you're going to be down in Denver with Zach, have a great weekend. Other than that, we, uh, we hope you have a fantastic weekend. Love to hear your thoughts on this topic. Have a great weekend. Bye, everybody. See you all. Hey, thanks for tuning in to the PT on Ice Daily Show. If you enjoyed this content, head on over to iTunes and leave us a review. And be sure to check us out on Facebook and Instagram at the Institute of Clinical Excellence. If you're interested in getting plugged into more ICE content on a weekly basis while earning CEUs from home, check out our virtual ICE online mentorship program at ptonice.com. While you're there, sign up for our Hump Day Hustling newsletter for a free email every Wednesday morning with our top five research articles and social media posts that we think are worth reading. Head over to ptonice.com and scroll to the bottom of the page to sign up.